Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the restart of the Manchester United career mode on FIFA 18. Now, if you didn't see on Twitter, uh, I mentioned that I went to go and record a episode of the United career mode for the first time in a couple of months really. And I went to load the file up and apparently the save file had corrupted. No idea how it happened. But I did mention on Twitter whether you guys would be against me restarting it from the very beginning. Uh, you guys didn't seem that bothered. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to restart it from this point forward. This is the first episode of the Manchester United career mode or the United career mode 2.0 or whatever you want to call it. So if you are excited for the restart of the United career mode, make sure to drop a like on the video. If you look at it. If we could hit 30 likes for the, being the first episode, um, I know a bit thingy with it already being uh, already having the first episode already, but if we could hit 30 on this restart, that would be really, really awesome and would help us out a lot. Also, if you've not already done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video to the channel. So as far as this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to get through all the introductory, introductory little bits and then we're going to have a look at the side and see where we need to, areas we need to improve. So I'm going to need a lot of uh, advice from you guys, a lot of recommendations for signings and what have your formations, whatever. Let me know in the comments section. Um, like I said, I need all the help I can get really uh, from you guys. And then what we'll do is we'll also crack on with the first game in the preseason tournament. You can see we've already been drawn against Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid and Sporting Kansas City in the American Challenge Cup. So we've got a few bits of news and stuff to get through from the United board. The first memo that we've received is about shirt sales. The board want us to earn 170, basically 176 million pounds in shirt sales, which I don't think that'll be too big of an ask if I'm being perfectly honest. And then we've also got the notice and the memo that the uh, transfer market is now open. So we'll be uh, diving into that, no doubt, to uh, bring in some reinforcements and potentially letting some players go. And now we've got the United board's expectations and vision. So let's have a look at this. So youth development is low, which is a little bit surprising with United's um, record of bringing through talent from their academy. And uh, yeah, so it's a bit that's a bit puzzling. Uh, but brand exposure is critical with that goal of 100 of uh, earning 176 million pounds in shirt sales. Financial very low with us being probably one of the more pro most profitable clubs in the game. Uh, then we've got domestic success, which is critical, which is to win the FA Cup and win the Premier League title. Definitely, definitely want to achieve both of those two. And continental success, we've got the short-term objective to reach the actual Champions League final. And within three seasons, they want us to win the Champions League, which is definitely on the agenda as well. And then we've got a couple of memos from the scout. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll crack on with this to see who they've recommended for us. A lot of young players, uh, Tammy Abraham, Kalechi Inacho, Calvert-Lewin. Um, not sure why Jamie Vardy's mentioned there, Harry Kane. So, uh, But we'll have a look through the side and see exactly where we need to address with new signings. So this is probably our strongest 11 that we can put out at the minute. So we've got, it's, it's basically like it is in real life with the 4-4-1-1 or the 4-2-3-1 or whatever way you want to look at it. Um, there are areas that I think we could improve. Uh, I definitely think we need uh, backup in the right back spot uh, because we've really only got Valencia. Then it's looking like um, Ashley Young, and yeah, I'd rather get somebody in a younger uh, player that we can eventually, hopefully, take over from Antonio Valencia. Uh, centre back could be another area to partner alongside Bay. Uh, we've got Smalling and Rojo, who are both 81 rated. Then we've got Phil Jones who's 80. So I do think we probably need to bring in another first choice centre-back, whether that means one of the existing ones is going to go out the door, I'm not sure. Left-back, I think... I'm not. I'm unsure what to do about left-back because we have got Luke Shaw, who's 78 rated. We've also got Blint, who's 80 rated. And we've also got Damian at a push, 
who is also 80 rated. Uh, I've gone for Luke Shaw as our first choice because I really want to kind of um, improve Luke Shaw via the training and hopefully get him up to a better rating. Um, then the only other area I would say that we need improvement is either in the right wing position or in the camp position if we're going to go with this formation. Um, because Mata, I'm not entirely sure because he's not quite quick enough for me in the right wing position. I think you need pace in those wide areas. And in the middle... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we what we do about the uh, the central attacking midfield area or the right midfield area. So those are the areas that I would say. First of all, the priority I would say is a centre back, uh, first choice centre back. Then I would say it's a backup right back. Then I would also say we either need a cam or we need a right winger. We're all right up front. We've got Lukaku. We've got Rashford. We've got Martial who can play that, and we've got the big man. Zlatan Ibrahimovic waiting in the wings as well. So we're well stacked in that forward area. Uh, pretty decent stacked in the uh, central midfield area, unless we get some offers in, obviously. Uh, but we've got the likes of Matic, Pogba, Herrera, Fellaini, Carrick, all vying for two spots. Uh, and then, like I say, even at the back, we've got numbers. But I just feel we need a little bit of extra quality, especially in that centre-back spot. Also, we've got a few players that are out of contract in the next year as well. Uh, likes of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Antonio Valencia, which makes getting a, another right-back in much more urgent. Um, and also Ashley Young, only having a year left as well. We've got the likes of Fellaini, who's only got a year. And Herrera, who's got, only got a year. And Juan Mata, who's only got a year. Uh, Michael Carrick, who's only got a year left. Luke Shaw and Daley Blint, who've both got a year left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offer a few of these a contract, uh, but there is a couple that I want you guys to let me know in the comment section. Should we go and offer Zlatan Ibrahimovic a new contract? He's the only one I'm really asking for because he's by far earning the most in wages at £210,000 a week. And at 35 years of age, are we going to get that return on it? I'm not sure. So let me know in the comment section. We'll have him for this year but it's whether we keep him beyond that. So first of all, we're going to offer a new contract to Luke Shaw. 21 years of age, 78 rated. I do want to build him up. I do see a lot of potential in him. Shame that Jose doesn't in real life, um, or it doesn't appear that way anyway. So we're going to offer him a new contract. Um, prospect, crucial, important, rotation. Right, well, he's going to be crucial eventually, but I'm going to say important tools at the minute because like I say at the moment that's what he is eventually hopefully he'll become crucial to the side okay he wants a five-year contract that's fine with me that'll take him up to 26 years of age that's absolutely spot on for me okay so we're now on to his weekly wages and he's currently on 67,000 he hasn't indicated that he wants to wants anything more than that so we'll just go for the same Again, see if uh, see if he accepts that one. And as a signing on bonus, I'm not entirely sure what to go with. We'll just leave it at that for now and see what he says. Okay, he wants less wages. He wants he wants fifty eight thousand pounds a week, but he does want a signing on bonus of seven hundred and thirty thousand. Um, we'll just accept it. Like I say, there are a few of the others that I do want to sign up, but for now we'll just leave it at that and we'll crack on. And we've now got our first game in the American Challenge Cup, the preseason tournament, and it doesn't come much bigger than this. Kicking off things against Los Blancos, Real Madrid. So let's jump into things. I'll show you the team that we're using. Okay, so we're just going to go with the standard side that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, so we've got Dair in goal, Shaw at left back, Smalling and Bay at centre back, Valencia the captain at right back, Matic and Pogba in central midfield, Rashford on the left, Mata on the right, Mkhitaryan in the camp position, in the number 10 position, and the big man, Romelu Lukaku, leading the line. We've got options on the bench as well, should we need to bring them on. But let's get underway. We'll start with our strongest side. We can always rotate from this point going forward. Also, just to let you know that I am currently playing on world class for the time being. If it gets too easy, I'll up, up it to... Uh, up into Legendary, although I have heard that Legendary is a little bit broken this year in FIFA 18 against the against the CPU. Uh, the world class is actually the more difficult, so we'll see how we get on anyway. Okay, so Real Madrid lining up with Zidane's kid in goal. Um, they've got Sergio Ramos playing for them, Fernandez, Kovacic, 
Casimiro Essencial, could he be in that camp position for United at some stage? And then they've got Benzema, Kareem the Dream up front with Mayoral. Casimiro under pressure from Mikatarian. It's a great ball to Lukaku. Lukaku, first effort, first goal for the big Belgian. Getting the brilliant ball from Mikatarian to find the Belgian. But it's a lethal finish from Lukaku to put us 1 0 ahead. First real attempt on goal, Luke Shaw. Mikatarian. I mean, why did Mikatarian just stop? I mean, it's 1 1, but why did Mikatarian just stop? It was almost like he was asking for the referee to blow the whistle for a free kick, and it's essential. But what is this from Mikatarian? I'm. Honestly, I was trying to get the ball there with him. Mkhitaryan wasn't the best ball. Lukaku. Done well. Into Juan Mata. Is this Mkhitaryan? Mkhitaryan. Is that Lukaku's assist? It is. And it's 2-1. Juan Mata. Lukaku. Goal and an assist on his debut in 17 minutes. Lukaku. Again turns his man. Lukaku. Great effort. Just the wrong side of the post. Excellent football, and Rashford's in here. Rashford! Should have been, should have been three, should have been three, one. Could have even played it across the box. That's half time, the referee finally blows up after playing what felt like about 10 minutes of uh, added on time. But we're going in two, one. Okay, I'm gonna make a slight change for this half. I'm gonna bring on Lingard for Juan Mata in that right midfield area. Uh, like I said, I just don't think Mata offers enough um, pace-wise. Sure, looking for Ramos. That's intercepted. Excellent play by Rashford. Should have the legs on pretty much all the Real defence here. Nice ball back. Lingard. Lingard makes it 3-1. The substitute gets in on the act. And for all his good work, Sergio Ramos at the back for Real Madrid. He's just dropped an absolute clanger. Nice ball looking for Lukaku. Excellent ball for him Blink to find him. Great ball to the back stick. And it's Lingard off the post. Lukaku turns his man. Lukaku, Lukaku with an absolute screamer to get his second of the game. 4-1 ahead against Real Madrid. Get in there, you big Belgian beauty. Okay, the final change I'm going to make, I'm just going to make, I'm just going to bring Rashford off for Martial for the last 10 minutes. Martial. He's got acres. They've pushed up. Martial, Martial still going, Martial, Martial, great strike from the young Frenchman, 5-1, lethal finish, but they really pushed up to try and get themselves back in the game, I don't know why with 5 minutes to go when they were trailing 4-1, but never mind, comes inside, got acres of space, keeps driving on, and then absolutely pings it, I mean Lukaku's was decent, but this one was he was getting nowhere near it. He could have had two goalkeepers and they wouldn't have saved it. Get in. And that's the final action of the game. 5-1 winners at the end for United in the first game of the career mode and in the pre-season tournament. Excellent, excellent display. I mean, it says it, it says they had three shots on target. I certainly don't remember them having three shots on target whatsoever. They had, I remember them having maybe one, maybe two at a push. Uh, we had nine on target, scoring five of those. So either a very good day at the office for our forwards or a terrible day at the office for their keeper. Lukaku gets man of the match, 9.6 for him. Mkhitaryan gets a 9.5. Um, picking up a couple of assists. And before we leave things off this episode, we've actually had a transfer offer from Napoli for Marcus Rojo. They're offering 16.4 million. His value is 15 million. Um, hmm... What I might do is I might leave this decision up to you guys. You guys let me know in the comments section what we do about this transfer offer. Do we accept it? Uh, we are pretty well stacked in the centre-back positions. We've got the likes of Bay, Smalling, Jones, Rojo if he stays, Two and Zabi. We've also got the likes of um, we've also got the likes of Damian and Blint who can both play centre-back. We're also talking about bringing in another centre-back, a, a, a first-choice centre-back to partner with Bayi. So we may have to let a centre-back go eventually anyway. Do we let Marcus Rojo go to Napoli before we have to bring in a new centre-back? Let me know in the comments section. And that is where we're going to leave off this first episode of the 
reboot of the Manchester United career mode or the United career mode 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Um, there are a few things that I need you guys to let me know in the comment section, like I've gone through the episode and said. First of all, I need your recommendations as players that we bring in in the positions that I mentioned. That is centre-back, right-back as a backup, and either a cam or a right-winger. So let me know your recommendations for signing for players to sign down below in the comments section. Also, do we offer Zlatan Ibrahimovic another contract for another year uh, with him being... 35 and on quite a lot of money. Do we offer him another contract or not? And finally, what we do about Marcus Rojo. Do we uh, accept the offer from Napoli for the Argentinian centre-back? Or do we wait at least until we've actually brought in that marquee centre-back signing that, we're, that I've already mentioned? But if you have enjoyed this introduction episode to the first to the reboot, sorry, of the United Career Mode, make sure to drop a like on the video. Like I say, we could hit 30 likes with it being episode one. Um, that would be really, really appreciated and helps it get out there to more and more people. Also, if you're new to the channel and you've not already done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And like I said, don't forget to hit that notification bell. And other than that, lads, I will catch you next time.